Hello, N4H and H here. I wanted you to see this quickly, uh, what's on the screen. You see it now, it's going away. That's noise. And uh, oh, there it is back. I'm gonna let you hear it in just a moment. And then I'm gonna tell you what it is. For those of you who, uh, I don't, I know somebody made a comment about this. Uh, so I just want to tell you, this is not the noise channel, but let's just face it with amateur radio today. We have so many more sources of interference to our radios, uh, especially the HF bands, um, that we have to contend with because of more and more modern electronics. So tuck that away. I'm going to let you hear the noise first. Now you'll notice, first of all, look at the, uh, let me grab the mouse here. Notice where my marker is, right? So I'm on 3.856 megahertz, a frequency I like to listen to in the mornings when I can. And you'll notice that the marker falls between two of the noise spikes. And that is advantageous for me. <laughs> because I can still enjoy my radio, listen to these guys, my friends here on 3.856. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video where we had a, bir a birthday bash a couple of weeks ago, and uh, well, uh, by the time you watch this video, it will, it will have been a while, but uh, we had a birthday bash in May. They call it the birthday bash. They do it once a year, and we all got together and, and uh, had barbecue and um, went over to, uh, uh, the workshop of one of the guys, he makes uh, bluegrass musical instruments. So that's the gang. They hang around on 3.856. Now, because their frequency falls between these spikes, and I should mention every time, this, these spikes, this, the interval of this no, these noise spikes do not change. So I'm able to get on 3.856 and hear. Now I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like by retuning. Gonna turn the VFO. So, <laughs> wow, it's pretty constant right now. I'm going to turn the volume down. Let me tell you what that is. That is our washing machine. It is one of those fancy computer-controlled washing machines. Um, for those of you who are uh, interested in technical aspects of it, um, it has a AC variable speed drive, and um, the computer is, uh, is controlling that, and therefore it's very noisy. That's what you're hearing. And by the way, that noise is broad band. It's not just affecting the 80 meter band. It extends even up into, uh, uh, you know, 18 megahertz, uh, 21 megahertz. I'll even hear it a little bit on 10 meters. Um, it is heavily concentrated here on the lower frequencies, but that's what it is. It is our washing machine. So anytime uh, the clothes are being washed, I have to contend with that, uh, that noise. So I wanted to throw that out there for those of you who may uh, be dealing with a similar type of noise. Now you, you may have a radio that doesn't have a band scope like uh, the FTDX10 here. This is not an FTDX10 video, by the way. Uh, I do have a series on uh, that particular radio dedicated to it, but this is just a, a, a generic video here for um, you know, anyone suffering from this type of noise. So if you're tuning around and you hear that sort of noise, and you know, and it's worse in some areas than, and then subsides in others. See, it's a little, it's still a, a, affecting 3.856 a little bit. Uh, as you can see, it's actually gotten a little bit more intense. But uh, if you're dealing with that type of noise, then, um, you know, before you go blaming the power lines, perhaps you might want to do the old breaker test uh, where you 
Hopefully, if you've got a radio that you run off of a power supply, try powering the radio from a battery and then turn off the main breaker that runs your house. Of course, yes, you'll have to reset your clocks. But, um, uh, you know, to see if the noise goes away. If the noise goes away, then you know for sure it's something within your home. So then you turn that main breaker back on and then start turning breakers off, individual breakers, until you narrow it down to... Uh, which room the noise is coming from. So, you know, the breaker test is the quick and sure way uh, to make sure that it is not something coming from within your own home before you go, uh, you know, calling the power company and they come out and don't find anything. And then, you know, the next time when it really is them, well, they're going to think that you're crying wolf. So the breaker test is very, very helpful for that. You know, like I said, power the radio on battery, go through your breaker panel flipping on and off individual circuits um, until you find the one that is uh, the source of the noise then you have to go into that room um, and start looking around at devices that m could possibly cause noise and then unplug them and it could be anything from some sort of a wall wart power supply not all of them but some uh, to a laptop power supply, a lamp, uh, a like a touch lamp. Uh, it could be a wireless phone charger of some sort. Now, not all of those cause a problem, but I have had one that did. And, uh, well, uh, let's just say I don't wirelessly charge my phone anymore. Um, recently, a friend of mine found his source of noise to be a food sealer. You know, the th those things where you, you put leftover food in and then it heat seals these plastic um, bags, you know, and it was causing the noise simply by being plugged in. It was not even turned on. So just there's a lot of different ways of um, uh, creating noise these days, you know, from devices that we bring into our own home. And of course, sometimes it is something that we can't control that, that is outside. It could be, uh, you know, a neighbor's uh, heat lamps for a, um, uh, what do you call those things? You know, where you grow plants, drawing a blank on the name there. Uh, but you know what I mean? Um, where you, uh, where you have plants, uh, you know, it could even be the, uh, lights that you have that turn on at night to illuminate your sidewalks, all sorts of, um, uh, noise sources these days that we have to contend with. And, Fortunately, the radios have gotten better and they've given us tools to deal with that. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, there's nothing that can deal with this noise you're looking at on the screen here. Not even the QRM eliminator that I have featured on the channel. The noise is just too strong, too intense. Um, it's not pulses and, you know, the noise blankers and QRM eliminator devices like that. They need something that's a pulse type noise for them to uh, deal with. In the case of the noise blanker, you know, it uh, interrupts a signal at an interval that, um, in, in the IF stage, it interrupts a signal at an interval where it literally blanks out that portion of the signal so you don't hear the noise. Um, and then, of course, the QRM eliminator does uh, the similar, uh, a, a similar function, but what it does is it does it by inverting, uh, so you have to have two antennas, and it you basically put the noise on one antenna 180 degrees out of phase with the other. But, you know, even a device like the QRM Eliminator cannot do anything about this noise here. It's not coming through the power wires in the house, just so you know, in case you're wondering. It is literally coming through the antenna. And the, the antenna with the highest gain for me is my doublet antenna, and therefore the doublet antenna uh, receives this noise the most. Okay, well, I hope you found the video uh, helpful and informative, and I guess I should, the word helpful may be not uh, a great choice there because I may be telling you bad news uh, if you've got this type of noise. But, uh, you know, hey, maybe our next purchase of a washing machine, we'll see if possible if we can find one that's a plain old simple washing machine. I don't even know if you can find those anymore. But, uh, again, hopefully you did find something uh, in this video to help you out. And uh, thank you to the Patreon support team who bring these videos to you. Without their support, I would not be able to do this. So uh, just be sure and uh, if you post a comment, um, maybe add into the comment that uh, you appreciate the Patreon support team for helping me out here. 
because um, when they help me out, I can help you out. If you'd like to join that Patreon support team, go to www.patreon.com uh, forward slash N4HNH. I'll put that on the screen here at the bottom. Patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And there are perks for the executive and VIP level uh, Patreon support team members. And um, also, if you would, uh, share the video. That helps us out, too. Share the video with friends that you think uh, could benefit from this information. And then, of course, uh, please smash that thumbs up. Click that like button. That helps us out with YouTube. And then uh, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, uh, be sure to click that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And uh, I post one about once a week, sometimes two a week. All right, thanks so much for watching, and 73 from in 4 H&H. &H.